Saturday, March the 12th, 2016, and I'm once again undertaking a bitten line walk, this time number nine, which is a West Runton circular. Very attractive little station this. Single line runs to Sheringham in that direction. Cromer and North Walsham behind me. This is around five and a half mile walk today which is a rather grey, misty day, but uh, thankfully no rain forecast. It's quite chill, about five or six degrees I'd say. And as you can hear, plenty of bird song. As that uh, dunnock there will testify Marking out his territory. This is uh, predicted to be a three hour walk. It's up past three now, so once again I'll be battling against the uh, twilight. Um, sunset today is around six o'clock, so hopefully I'll get done before it's too dark. One of the local maps that seems to be uh, outside every station indicating where we are on a variety of walks in the area. There are uh, apparently, according to the notes I'm following today, 10 commons in East and West Runton. We're in West Runton, uh, joined by a network of footpaths. Obviously they support a, uh, an abundance of wildlife. Over the road there's uh, yet another one. We're about to turn left here. Into what is station close. Just as I leave a station, a two car unit pulls in. Passing the Lynx Hotel on my right, which I highly recommend. Good food there. Stayed there in the past. Passing the Lynx Golf Course, after which the hotel is named. I'm very close to the railway on my left here. Approaching uh, what I believe is called Ingleborough Hill. Turning left by the Kissing Gate. Well marked as usual. Following this narrow, narrow track. And turning right through the Kissing Gate into the National Trust's Ingleborough Hill. As I mentioned a few minutes ago. Take note. Still some patches of mud around underfoot, but generally speaking, it's dried out quite well now. I haven't had any rain for a couple of days. That would apply now, so I note. At this juncture, it's up straight ahead, as opposed to right. Our onward journey's up over the hill. Gorse is in full bloom at the moment. Lovely. Nearly at the top of Inkleborough Hill. Views obviously today are not that brilliant. But over there in the distance you can see Beast and Bump, which features in uh, Walk 10 that we did a couple of weeks ago. Just about make it out. St Andrew's Church. 
and over there in the distance on my right is the coast the tide is uh, out at this moment in time 1440 I think it was low tide at Cromer anyway so on its way in again Views from the eastward side of Ingleborough, looking towards uh, Cromer there, church in the distance through the mist. This wonderful gorse, very uplifting. Yeah, on a good day, <coughs> good clear day, you get some great views up here. Still, that's March for you. Get a different aspect this time of year. Still pleasant enough. A bit of confusion at the top of these steps I've just descended, but back on track through the kissing gate. Through the kissing gate opposite and across the field. Coming up to point three now. Good use of old railway stock here. Counterweight on the uh, kissing gate. Point three. Turning right here into the uh, hedge sunken lane. I'm going to miss point four out, which takes you under those railway bridges and down into the village of East Runton. Basically, because I don't need to go down there. But for those that do, there are a number of uh, facilities like toilets and shops and what have you. Not many, but a few. So uh, I'm continuing up here right past this uh, flock of geese, which could be interesting to pass. Yeah, like cows, they seem to uh, gravitate towards me. Yeah, no problems today, luckily. When I drive past this way, as I often do on a Monday, they're often in the road, just sitting there. This is their territory. Interesting name for a close, as opposed to six months. Get your fish and chips on a Wednesday. Easy to miss this footpath. Finger post. I was uh, marching on towards the next one, which I know is formerly part of the coast path. But if you keep your eyes peeled for this gas lamp, then uh, you should be okay. Up this lane towards those houses, which are named thus. Pastoral scene. A footpath past a bungalow known as Driftwood. Got snowdrops out in the middle of March. Shows how chill it is up this way. It's quite a long life actually. Didn't seem to last long down south. Now crossing what is known as the Cromer Curve, which was built to uh, link the old railway line with the new station. That is currently Cromer Station, Cromer Beach. The old station used to be up near where I live, and uh, consequently, this curve wasn't here. There was no need for it. It's only when rival companies got involved that uh, this curve was added, I believe. Views from the wooded copse, the point near it anyway, mentioned in point seven of the text. Manor Farm, camping and caravan site on my left. Not much going on there at the minute. That will soon change though, once Easter arrives in a few weeks time. Point 9 of the text, that way towards Cromer if you so wish. 
So we're right on the edge of Cromer here, or here, turn right, just see the uh, yellow way marker there, to complete the walk. But there's a broken finger post there, although there is one in the hedge. Entrance to Manor Farm again. Obviously we crossed it further down there. Now going under the Chroma Curve railway line. Interesting. Let's refer to the cattle, I suppose. Point 10 of the text needs updating because that refers now to the Norfolk Coast Path marker finger post but that was changed rerouted a few years ago so clearly text needs updating it's just simply a public footpath now tea time for the sheep loads of these little lambs Interesting brown jelly like fungus that is. Once again, the text needs updating the last paragraph of point 11 because um, Norfolk Coast Path is no longer coming this way. So it's a bit confusing where you go here now. I guess it will be following the uh, blue plaque. So let's gamble on that. It's a new uh, foot uh, finger post as well. So you would have thought that uh, the text would have been updated as well as the finger post. From memory, because I did walk the Norfolk Coast Path when it did come this way, I believe we're headed across this common. There should be a plank bridge through that uh, Hedge over there. It's indeedy, so just follow the um, blue way marker. Yeah, another campsite. This one's actually got some um, residents in place. Interesting time of the evening, this. About an hour of daylight left. As we noted on the last circular Sheringham walk, lots of things start coming out. There is a white finger post there on the right. Don't follow that. Follow this uh, gravel track. Just passing by the village of Aylmerton. Oh, and just in front of me, a flower I always associate with Easter. Lovely primroses. So here we are, coming up to Roman Camp. National Trust. Now interestingly, there's a circular walk I'm not familiar with. The Roman Camp Circular Walk. In any case, a good friend of mine lives uh, very close to this point. About 250 metres. Very lucky position to have. When the traffic's not whizzing through here, which it does, a wonderful location. This is a relatively recent information board. Wasn't here on my uh, coast path walk. Anyway, quite useful. We're now uh, stood at the highest point in Norfolk. Well, almost. It's got nothing to do with the Romans Roman camp. It's a former iron working pit apparently. 336 feet high here. So uh, 
not that high in the big scheme of things. But uh, there you go, Norfolk's highest point. Plenty of adders around here in the summer, so I'm told. But as I continue to say, I've yet to see one. Wonderful wooded, deciduous woods. Proper English woodland this. Bit of Scots pine in here. Plenty of birch. Lots of holly. Once again following the blue circular walk marker past the uh, cycle barriers referred to in the text. I think 14 in the text that is. Confirmation of what I said earlier. Lovely. Extremely damp and mulchy underfoot on this section. Somewhere around about here we could do with a blue footpath marker because I think this is what they refer to in the text as bare right halfway down across an open meadow. Let's uh, find out. Yes indeed it was correct. So across that meadow turn right onto this track with the uh, Shire Horse Sanctuary on my left. Yep, makes sense. Looks like they've got plenty of feed out there anyway. Not much left on the grass though. All chomped away. They do like that name around here, don't they? Earlier we saw Half Year Close. Now we've got Half Year House. Very pleasant it is as well. That I now believe to be our native periwinkle, identified from my walk last year in uh, South End. So I learned something anyway, unless someone's going to tell me different. So we come out by Rannick Park, east and west. Opposite another bit of National Trust land over the road. Wonderful. A time of year. Plenty of them around here, I should imagine. That's what we saw a moment ago from the other side. Information board here about West Runton Common. Number of uh, species that can be seen here. Bit of background information. Red tailed bumblebee. Never heard of that. Wow. Water vole, lovely. Harebell. Interesting. So here we are back at West Runton five and a quarter mile although that uh, probably will end up as five and a half and I've readjusted a slight error that I made with the mapping so uh, very pleasant walk nice mixed variety of walking nice and soft underfoot and uh, it just took me over two hours two hours six minutes apparently so uh, 
a bit quicker than I anticipated. It's 17.46 now, not even sunset yet. So good, another one done.